What's going on, everybody? Hope all is well. Hope you're having a great and blessed week. Hope your week is going amazing. Man, this week for me has been a great, great week. And one of the reasons why is this week I spent I spent a lot of time with the Lord this week. And one of the things that I really, really understood and really realized, and it's not sad I didn't notice from before because I really did, but it's like God put an extra inf to this message is his love and understanding really what his love means. But not only that, but understanding how his love for us, how much he loves myself, how much he loves you, anybody who's watching this video, how much that he wants his love to penetrate into our hearts so we can make sure that we love everyone else to love his children. And this week, I just spent some time thinking about that because, you know, I, I, I spent some time just really just praying to the Lord, spending time with him. I've been, this amazing book that I've been reading called The Vision, I truly, truly recommend those who have, um, that would love to read this book. To read this book, definitely check it out. But it's just a lot that God has spoken to me this week, and it, it really just had me looking at things in such a different way. Like, the way I thought that I was supposed to love people and how I was supposed to love people, it really have shifted into a different level. And I wanted to share this message because I believe that some of us understand how much God loves us. And some of us, some of us understands how we're supposed to love people, but obviously we have trouble doing it. We have trouble understanding sometimes how much God loves us. We have trouble understanding how we're supposed to love people because what love does, love dismantles and defeats the enemy. What love does, it it, it causes us to be more unified than divide. What love does, what God's love does. It cancels out all hatred. It cancels out all anger, bitterness. What it does, it helps us understand God's mercy, God's forgiveness. Not only for us, but how we're supposed to have mercy and forgive those, even those who have offended us, those who have hurt us, those that we disagree with. Because here's the reality. The reality is, is that there's no way that I can make somebody love me. There's no way that I can make somebody not hate me. No matter what good that I do, no matter how much I may extend my hand, no matter how much I can be a faithful, loyal pers person to that person, it doesn't matter. You can't force somebody to love you. But what I can do, what I have control over is how I love that person. And that's the important thing that God has shown me this week is how we are truly supposed to love people. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is something that God has placed heavy in my heart for the last couple of years. And I've said this numerous times on this podcast. I've said this numerous times on videos that I've dropped. And this week, I understood why that this scripture, this message from the Lord sticks out to me more than anything because that's the foundation. The greatest commandment, as the Bible says, is to love the Lord with all your heart, all your might, and all your strength. But then he follows up with that with the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that's the part that God wants to drive home for us. And I feel like sometimes, especially as believers, we miss that part. Sometimes I feel like we think that because we are believers and we are Christians, and this is not me trying to not condemn or anything. This is really more just having a conversation, um, even those who are not believers, but just having a conversation regarding the importance of God's love for us and how much he wants us to love on his people, even if we disagree with them, even if they're part of a different political party, even if 
they don't look at it. They have a different skin texture, a different skin color than us. We're still called to love that person. There are people that I, God has put in my life that I know I do not agree with them when it comes to certain issues. But God showed me how to love on how to love them. And I've built such, a, such an amazing relationship with some of these people. And that's the beauty of it. Because what that does, it breaks down the barrier. Instead of us putting each other in this box and like I can only associate with myself with somebody who looks like me, who talks like me, who only shares the same values as me. And that's not what really what the body of Christ is. We're called to love on people. Now, it does not mean that, yes, we're not associate with our, associate ourselves with those who are not like, like-minded individuals. What I mean by that, yes, if let's say marriage for an example, you're not going to marry somebody where you guys don't share the same values. You don't share the same beliefs because that's an intimate relationship that's different. Something like that was going to cause confusion, it's going to cause division, it's going to cause an issue. Satan's going to be able to come in and expose that and destroy and break up that marriage. But your neighbor, your co-worker, your friend, the person you see on the train, we're called to love one of these people. Because what love does, it dismantles judgment, hate. And even when we're trying to judge somebody or we're trying to want to um, condemn somebody, correct somebody, it should be done with love. God calls us to still to condemn or correct or to convict with love because why? That's what he does with us. And see, the more you understand God, who God is, the easy, the easier it is to really love on people. The way God loves us, there's no way that we can even fandom it, right? What I thought, like, yeah, I know how much God loves me. It's like, nah, I really did. I didn't realize this week. I really realized, like, nah, I, I can't even like. There's no way I can measure up to it. There's no way I could even define it. But God doesn't call us to. What he calls us is is like, just know that how much I love you. But one of the ways that you're going to know is the mercy that I have over your life. So when you make a mistake, you commit a sin, the times that you have been disobedient, it's my mercy that has kept you, kept me from destroying you. It's my mercy that has protected you from things that you may not have realized. It does not mean that you don't reek what you sow. It does not mean if that if you are continuing to live a life that is disobedient or to the contrary of God's what God has called you to live. It does not mean that there are things that you're not going to have to pay for. But what keeps God from destroying you is his patience, which is his mercy, which equals to his love, which is something for us as human beings, even for myself. We struggle with because think about how many times that somebody has hurt us, somebody who has disappointed us, somebody who has backstabbed us. We, we wrote them off. Some of us want to probably maybe seek revenge. Like, I want to get that person back. We held on to bitterness, hatred, all these different emotions, all these fleshly emotions, especially because that's what the world tells us to do. This is the way the world tells us to operate. But we're not supposed to operate the way the world tells us to operate. We operate according to the Lord. And if we want to bring people, more people to Christ, more people to God, we need to make people to understand God's love. Yes, we could tell them about the laws of the, the law of the Lord, but we have to understand it's God's love is what's going to bring people in. It's what's God's love is what's going to help people deal with issues that they have with sin. How do I know this? When Jesus died on the cross. He died on the cross for what? For our sins. The man who did not sin, committed no sins, bared our sins when he died on the cross. Because 
God knew that there is no way that man can live up to that expectation. We constantly was failing. We constantly was dropping the ball. We constantly was being disobedient to the Lord, to our God, to our Father. So he had to send his only begotten son. Why? To die on the cross. And though what we thought was death was a resurrection. Because he resurrected. He resurrected. And what that did, that created a new covenant. So we no longer had to make these different types of sacrifices, these sacrificial offerings to receive God's mercy. No, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He died on the cross because he, God loves us so much. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. Powerful. Powerful. And so when I realized that this week, again, when you think you know, but God takes it to a deeper level, you're just like, wow. The power of love, the power of God's love, the power of God's mercy, his patience for us. The Bible says God is love. But then when we look back at 2 Corinthians, I think I believe it's chapter 1, verse 13. We all know this famous verse where it says that um, love is patient. So we put that correlation. God is love. Love is patient. It helps us understand God's love and how we're supposed to look and treat people that's what God wants us to understand that's what he wants to drive home this is what I learned this week and it wasn't like I said an experience I had with an individual that made me realize or anything but I will say this is that after this week I remember I, you know I just came back from the gym not too long ago and I remember walking into the gym and everybody's working out doing their own thing, rightfully so. But it's like the way I looked at people differently today. I looked at them, and it's not saying I didn't look at them with hatred before or looked at them like, yo, who's this guy or who's this girl or anything. No, it's like I have so much more love and compassion for the people that I saw at the gym. Because one, I don't know what they personally may be dealing with, some of them may be having a great, amazing life. Some of them may be struggling with depression or, or some type of mental health. Some of them may be, you know, this, just dealing with some other personal issues. Who knows? Who knows what it is? Some of them may have different religious belief. They may not even be a Christian. They may not believe in Jesus. But for me, God showed me when I walked into this gym, because I sensed this heavy in my spirit was just to have love for people. So it was like when somebody walked by me, I just wanted to smile. I wanted to wave hi. Now, did I do that? No, I didn't do that because I was also busy with my workout, but I sensed that's something I want to do and I, and I want to be more courageous, courageous and bold to do that. And of course, living, especially living in New York City and you know New Jersey area, because we have the same mentality as two different states. To be honest, you disagree with that, you disagree with that. It is what it is. But <laughs> um, you say hi to somebody out here, they're like, yo, what's your problem? Why are you waving at me? Why are you smiling at me? Why are you saying good morning? It, it's, it's a known thing. It really, really is. It's true. I'm sure people who are not from here have seen videos of people talking about it or maybe visited or those who live here. We know it's what it is, but we don't have to adapt to the culture. We can change the culture because we're not, we shouldn't be moving within the culture. We should be moving with the culture of God, how God calls us to move, not the way the world or the state or the city, the borough or the country that we live in. We need to change the narrative. We need to show more love and not be afraid to be able to do that.
because God's love is what's going to transform this world. And that's the part that I, that's the part that I really, really believe that I'll say it again. The more that we display, the more people are going to know who God's children is. That's how people go to know the difference is by that. See, Satan wants us to move in this world under our own agenda, under our own theology. Satan wants us to be more divided. He wants to cause more confusion. He wants to cause more hatred because when he does that, there's no room for love. There's only room for our own selfish agenda. There's only room for things that we think that we should be loving are things that are really out to destroy us. Things that we should not be loving, we make it our idol, we make it our God. And all that does is leads us into destruction. And that's the part where Satan has twisted things around to only love ourselves, make it about ourselves, to only live off only our truth. We don't live off of our truth, we, love, we live off of the truth of God. Excuse me, that's what we live off of. The truth of God, the knowledge of God, the wisdom that God gives us. The Bible says, let um, me pull up the scripture, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. That's in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. And so when I think about wisdom, and I think about fear, Right, because it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And I know some churches, when they promote God or when they're speaking about God, they um, create this image that God is a God of just he's nothing but just wrath. And he's a very angry God and he's just ready just to strike us down at any moment. But in the reality is that's not true. God wants us, us to know more about his love than his wrath. It doesn't mean that he is not a God of order and does not mean, like I've stated before in previous videos, where that his wrath and his anger does exist. But again, if somebody's patient and they have mercy, this is their first, always going to be their first reaction. And when I think about fear, and anytime I read the scripture, I think about my parents, the fear of the Lord, because you hear that a lot, the fear of the Lord. And to me, it's more of a semblance of honor, of respect, of obedience, not fear of like, oh, I'm always in danger, not fear that I should always be trembling. No, 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 no. He's a sovereign God. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God. He's a loving God. Like my parents, anytime I did something wrong, I knew that, okay, I may have to pay for this. I knew that there are consequences to my actions. I knew my fear came out of honor and respect to my parents. Not that they were going to harm me. They were going to destroy me or be done with me and stop loving me. And that I had to live a perfect life. I always had to walk in a fine line. No. Even when my parents would discipline me, I still understood that how much my parents still loved me. They still provided for me. They still did not disown me. And I know as long as I came to my parents and I was honest and I was truthful, and I asked for forgiveness, they would give it. And I know that's not the story for everybody because I know that some people have grew up in a very troubling household, they grew up in a household where an abusive household, where they were physically abused, ver verbally abused, and even sexually abused, unfortunately. And for those who have experienced that, I'm deeply sorry. I'm sorry to hear that because I know people personally who grew up in households like that. I, knew, I know many people, unfortunately. And I'm very fortunate where I did not experience that. But my point is, is that when I think about the fear of the Lord, I think about that. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And to me, that's just translating is understanding who God is and how we're called to be obedient to him, 
How are we supposed to follow him? How are we supposed to live a life for him? Not live a life for God where it's just under our own convenience, where we just toss God around because then we're not really walking with God. We're not really building a relationship with God. God may be there with us, but we're not walking with God. We're not really living with God. We're not spending time with God. It's like having a couple, a married couple. And we know some of these, some of these married couples where they're married, but they sleep in separate rooms. They watch TV in separate rooms. They don't spend time with each other. They're in and out. And you can see that there's not a lot of life in that marriage. And every now and then they'll go to the movies, they'll sit down and eat dinner with each other, they'll have a conversation, but it's only when it's convenient. Why? Because either the love is gone or either because they have their own agenda or they only speak to each other when they need something. Sounds familiar. That's how some of us treat God. And God's like, no, I'm not your side piece. I'm not somebody you just contact when you want to. I'm not um, when you want something is when you want to call on me. You're saying that you're for me, you love me, and you're walking with me, but where's the time that needs to be spent? Because we make time for everything else, but sometimes we don't make enough time for God. And the more we make time for God, the more we see who God is, the more we understand again, to drive back this point, his love, his mercy. God is not going to beat us down for the sins that we committed in the past as long as we went back and asked for forgiveness. Satan is the one who's going to bring it up and make you think that, oh, you remember what you did five years ago? Maybe what you did three weeks ago? Maybe what you did last year? He's going to replay that in your mind where God, the Bible says, he forgives our sins as far as the east, as far as the west. God is like, I forgot about that. I don't even think about that. I don't bring that up. That's it. Cast tossed away. So when somebody's constantly bringing back something that you've done in the past, when God has already forgiven you, again, that shows you God's love and his mercy. For us. That's why how the way we love, it's nowhere near how God loves. But what we can do is we can do everything that we can to love people the same and learn how to forgive and how to let go and experience peace within our heart, peace within our spirit. The peace that the Holy Spirit calls that, that guides us to have. Not our flesh. Our flesh wants, to hold, wants us to hold on to bitterness and anger. And when we think about it, when we really analyze it, if we want God to forgive us and we want God to have mercy on us for the things that we have done wrong, like, oh gosh, I didn't realize I did this. I didn't realize that I made this mistake. We want God to have the same mercy, even for things that we may not even realize, to have the same level of mercy for us. The book that I'm reading, he gave this very powerful illustration because these are um, dreams and revelations that he got from God and he saw within the spiritual world. And, 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 and so one of the things that he mentioned, not to give too much away, but that he was speaking with God and God showed him this man. And he looked at this man, he's like, man, this man looks very familiar. He's like, but I, he's like his face looks familiar, but I don't know where that I know him from. And God said, yes, I showed him to you in your dream. He's like, oh, for real? He's like, oh, okay. But not only that, you've actually seen him in person. You've passed by this man many times. And God, he was like, oh, wow. And he was like, this is a guy that you passed by, but you shamed. Because he was in the corner. This guy was a homeless man. He was in a corner, but he was in the corner, though he was homeless, but he was out there trying to tell everybody how much God loves them. He was out there preaching how much Jesus loves them. But he said that he, the way that he looked at this man, this homeless man, he looked at him as somebody that was doing Satan's work because he didn't look the part. And God said, no, he was actually one of my 
faithful service. And the reason why I showed you him in this dream so you could see and understand. But you missed it. The guy said that, man, his heart just sank. He felt that, man, I really disappointed God. And God said, he's like, he asked God, he's like, God, forgive me. God said, I've forgiven you. He's like, I wasn't showing you this to condemn you. I wasn't showing this to make you feel ashamed. I was just showing you this so you just know how much you need to love people. And he said, when God told him that, even when God said he forgave, he said all he felt was just the mercy and love of God. He didn't feel the shame that he initially first felt. He didn't feel um, disgusted with himself the way he thought. He's like, no, the mercy in God, he just felt love from the Lord. And that same man came up to him and showed him the same thing. Very powerful. Again, that makes me look as like, wow, we have to be careful in how we treat people because we never know who God is going to use, who God's going to make us cross paths with, that God wants us or even testing us to see how much, how much humility and how much love that we have towards people. And so I just wanted to share this message I thank, you, I thank you for those who watched this video. I hope this video really touches your heart. And I would just encourage, seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Like, really seek Him and, and, and ask God, God, show me your love. But not only that, show me how you want me to love on people. I know we go to God and ask God, like, hey, God, I need a new car. I need a new job. Um, God, I need, you know, my bills paid. Um, sometimes we just go to God and ask for things, but ask God, like, God, what is it that you want from me? What is it that I can do to please you? And I could guarantee you, whatever he asks you to do to please him, it's going to involve love in some shape or form. I, I could promise you that. Even if you're struggling with sin, you're struggling with an addiction, just understand God's love will help dismantle that addiction. Understand how much God loves you and that the reason why he does not want you to do the things that you're doing because he does not want you to destroy yourself and he does not want to destroy you. He really wants to protect and love you. That, my friend, is love. That is love. Until the next episode or to the next video, stay tuned to the next episode. Okay, I kind of messed that part up a little bit. Let's, let's, let's do this again. Let's do this again. I'm not even going to edit that part out. But until the next episode, which will be dropping very soon, one love. Mm -hmm.